Hello Chem 241 students, this is Professor James Ormord here and today we're going to be talking about the recrystallization experiment uh, more, more specifically the recrystallization of acetanilid. Uh, recrystallization is an ex extremely important technique used in organic chemistry specifically to purify solids and uh, what we have here today is an impure acetanilid. You can see it's kind of a brown muddy color if you have ever seen purified acetanilid, it actually has a very a white crystalline, almost looks like glitter, uh, when it's purified. <clears throat> this is obviously not pure. Uh, there's a couple of tricks that we do. We, uh, we mostly solubility tricks that we use here to purify out the, uh, the pure acetanilid. Basically pull, out, pull it out from the impurities. Uh, the first step here is to uh, first uh, dissolve this into a uh, solvent. Uh, the key for choosing your solvent is one where it's very highly specific. You need to be one where the compound of interest is soluble at high temperatures, but insoluble at low temperatures. It turns out for this particular compound, acetanilid, that water works perfectly. I just want to emphasize the point here that water is not the only solvent used for crystallization. We will actually be using methanol later on as well as ether in, a, in an Organic Chem 2 experiment. So it just works out that water works good here, where acetanilid is soluble at high temperatures, but insoluble at low temperatures. Uh, one of the other impurities in here is table salt, uh, sodium chloride, NaCl. And if you guys probably remember your general chemistry solubility rules that this particular stuff is soluble at high and low temperatures. So what we can do here is uh, we filter it while it's hot. Uh, we can make sure that we remove any insoluble pure impurities in here. Uh, we also have the colored impurity in here, which we'll be getting rid of by using activated charcoal. It turns out that activated charcoal uh, will bind to colored organics, and we can just remove that by a simple filtration while it's still hot. So to give you guys a quick rundown overview of the experiment, uh, what we're going to be doing is first you want to boil some uh, water to a roaring boil, and then you go ahead and add it until you see all of this dissolve. Um, most of it should dissolve, but the oily aniline, uh, aniline impurity will not dissolve. So you look for all the solid stuff that got you go in solution, leave the oil behind. Um, while that's uh, boiling, you then go ahead and add a little pinch of the uh, activated charcoal uh, just to remove the color components. And then we can go ahead and remove the charcoal with the aniline attached to it via filtration. Uh, the next part, you just let that uh, filtrate cool down. Uh, the key is though you don't cool it too fast. Uh, as you guys probably read, uh, if you cool it too fast, you will actually re-trap the impurities and you'll basically have an impure uh, compound at the end. Uh, so to, to ensure that we get natural crystallization, you just go ahead and let it happen on its own by throwing it on the bench, let it sit, cool off on its own. When it's cool to the touch, then you can go ahead and put it in an ice bath. Uh, after it's in the ice bath, the acetanilid being insoluble at low temperature should precipitate out and we can go ahead and collect a body back in filtration. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. All righty, today we're going to go ahead and start with some impure acetanilid. We have 3.161 grams of impure acetanilid. Uh, the impurities here are uh, likely table salt and there is some aniline in there as there are impurities today. So we go ahead and start off by adding some boiling hot water. So here this water is mostly boiling at this point. I recommend that you use some kind of oven mitts of some sort. It is uh, scorching hot. I'm gonna go ahead and use a paper towel and pour some in. Oops. You wanna add just enough to get it to dissolve. Uh, because the aniline is, a, is an oil, it's not, it's not soluble in water, you, you should see some oil droplets on the top. And notice how I have it on, on a second hot plate because I want to keep it hot during the whole process. So if I let it cool down, the acetanilid will recrystallize out prematurely. I think I have enough in there. Uh, if you have too much water in there, it's not typically uh, too big of a deal. Just you may lose some of your material. But it's not the end of the world. With the, with the aniline impurity, it's kind of hard to gauge exactly how much you need of the water. But at this here, you see little oil droplets in there. That is not going to dissolve no matter how much water I add. So we have to get rid of it other ways. 
So the best way to get rid of this kind of stuff is to add some activated charcoal to the mixture. And this part you want to be careful that you don't add it too fast, otherwise it's going to boil over on you. Alright, so let's go ahead and add a little bit of charcoal in there, hopefully I don't add it too fast. And you should see the brown color almost go away. We're going to keep the black there because, you know, charcoal is not soluble in water but you should look for the brown color to go away. I know it might be challenging to see, but I don't see any brown in there anymore. This looks black. I think I have enough charcoal. Okay. At this point, we want to do a hot filtration, uh, meaning that we're gonna keep it hot during the whole process, but first things first, I need some filter paper. Filter paper, go ahead and fold it in half. And we're gonna flute it, so we have to fold it a couple times. So I fold it in half. And then I just keep folding it in half until I can't fold it in half anymore. And there's actually a physical limit on how many times you can fold a piece, piece, piece of paper in half. I think it's eight, eight or nine, doesn't matter how big the paper is. All right, so uh, your liquid will flow a lot better if it is fluted, like this. So it's kind of like a coffee filter at this point. All right, and for, for this type of uh, separation or purification, we want to use a stemless funnel. Uh, the reason why is because if you use a stemmed funnel, what will happen is the acetanilid will recrystallize inside the funnel, in the stem. So you want a stemless funnel. Uh, for this part here, you got to be careful with the hot glass. I recommend that you basically take a paper towel and you fold it in half long ways like this. And then I'm going to make this into a little handle. Alright, this part you want to be quick. Don't let it cool off early. So pour it in and try not to burn yourself. Yeah. And then I have the, the watch glass to keep everything hot in there because we want to try to avoid getting any acetanilate crystals inside of the funnel, which is going to be an issue, but we can use the hot water to help with that. Not sure if you're seeing it well on the camera, but we should have completely clear and colorless uh, water coming through. You shouldn't have any brown. We got rid of that with the charcoal, and we should be getting rid of the charcoal with the filter. Uh, any, if there were salt impurities in there, there's definitely the salt would have passed through. Uh, but when we get to the part where we cool it off, we should it should be a non-issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this thing a rinse with some of the hot water. But I'm pretty sure I left some acetanilate crystals inside of there. While well, this filters anyway. Right. Do this while you can see it. <laughs> I mean, you could use oven mitts for this, but I think it may take way longer than normal. No color coming through. Looks clean to me. 
you kind of start seeing some of the crystals growing in there. This is what we're trying to avoid, but you can see some of the crystals in there. That's unavoidable. The biggest part of doing recrystallization correctly is being patient. It's mostly drained now. I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of the hot water to it just to make sure that any crystals that are kind of hanging around the filter will pass through when they get dissolved in the hot water. And as I said earlier, if you have a little bit too much water, it's not a, that big of a deal. I'm going to go ahead and take this off the heat now. You don't want to throw it straight into the ice. You want to make sure that you give it a chance to naturally cool off on its own on the bench top. So while this finishes draining, not much left here. I'm going to go ahead and get an ice bath going. And I'll put this in frame so we can see if we see anything. All right, it's not too hot anymore. I can comfortably touch it with my bare hands. That means it's cool enough. You should start to see some crystals forming as it cools off. Uh, but sometimes though, they don't want to form on their own. You may need to seed the glass. Uh, seeding the glass, you just get a glass stirring rod and scratch the inside of the glass on the inside of the beaker. Under the level of the liquid. So uh, let's see if that works. So initiate recrystallization. Let's take a view there. Scratch the glass. Yep, that worked. You have crystals forming now. That white powder is pure acetanolid. And as soon as it starts, you, you don't want the seed anymore. Just let it get down to be ice cold, and then we'll do the filtration. And while we wait, I'm just setting up a vacuum filtration. You guys should have learned how to do this in general chemistry. I got this up to the vacuum line there, and then we have a sidearm flask, Buckner funnel. Um, I recommend that you guys get a tear weight on the cup as well as some paper in it. So I will do that. All right, we are almost ready to get started here. I just got a tear weight on the cup and the filter paper in it. We will get the mass of the acetanolid after the filtration, after it dries. The tear weight was 33.628. You're going to need that number later. Both of the numbers, actually. All right, looks like we're ready to filter this now. Take a look at how it looks. See it in there. All right, so I have all this hooked up here, just the vacuum line. I recommend that you start it and then get it wet with some water. So the solvent you want to wet with is not always water. You guys probably learned to wet it with water, but typically in organic chemistry, you want to wet it with whatever solvent you're using. 
we just happen to be using water today, so it's fine. But there are there are labs later on where you want to use things like ethanol or ether. It all depends on what your solvent is. And in certain organic processes, adding water can destroy everything. So right now it's fine, but it's not always fine. And then this part, uh, you want to make sure that you swirl this, have it in a, a, a slurry, and just try to pour it all at once. And pure astanilid looks kind of like glitter when it's pure. Should see nothing coming through. Just pure astanilid crystals on the top. And then typically you want to leave it on the vacuum for about 10 minutes to dry off any of the water. Uh, realistically, in a research setting, I would probably let it sit for overnight just to make sure that no water was there. But we'll see how good our drying process was later on when we get our melting point, right? So uh, we're going to go ahead and let this sit here for 10 minutes. Not going to make you guys watch it, but it'll be 10 minutes. Alright, this has been sitting on the vacuum now for about 10 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and cut it off and show you guys what it looks like. And get a weight. So the whole top part pulls off. So remember, before you get a weight, you're probably going to have some water collecting on the bottom here. And that adds to your weight. So just make sure you dry that off. I typically will dry this off and then uh, run it on the vacuum longer just to make sure that there's no water. But look at this stuff. It looks like glitter almost. Let me get a good view of this. Yeah, there you go. All right, now that we have pure acetanilid from our vacuum filtration, the last thing we need to do is to assess the purity. And you guys saw last week, the way we assess purity in solids is by melting point. So here I'm going to be uh, melting the impure crude stuff that we started with. Uh, most of it should melt though. I may see a little bit of the salt not dissolving, the salt impurity, but we look for the bulk of the solid melting. And then we're going to compare that to the stuff that we just purified. Okay. Now that we have purified acetanilid, we need to get the melting point to assess the purity as we saw in last week's lab. So the procedure is exactly the same. We just gotta put our two samples in there and I have a setup where the left one is the pure acetanilid and the right one is the purified one. Uh, try your best to get a T1 and a T2 for this. All right, let's get her going. Okay, I gotta wait. So there's my mass numbers. Focus. All right, so we have 36.389. That is the weight of the funnel, filter paper, everything here. So you get the mass of the recovered acetanilid by difference. So you guys go ahead and do that calculation. It's this number minus that number. And I want to take a look at this stuff here real quick before we move on. So I'm going to show you what it looks like when I break it up. It looks just like glitter to me. There we go. Pure ass channel. It looks way different than what we started with, right? Here's a quick comparison of what they look like before and after.
So before was this, after, later. <laughs> 